taste some drinking wine. I know, but you know, I'm oh, gonna so have to make sure it's not the wine for a me. real a real wine and not like a wine that you turn your nose up to. I have a very expensive taste, Angela. It's like Merlot. <laughs> oh God, don't you dare! <laughs> White Zinfandel. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> All the black people hits. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! Welcome back to another episode of Tea Straws. Tea Straws. What's up? Um, a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's been a busy week. It's been really busy. What have <sighs> you been up to? Fucking. Training choking bitches out and choking bitches out, Fucking yeah. Them up. Yeah, I've been uh doing a little jujitsu in my free time, you been know, on a jujitsu tour. Yeah, usually Saturday is my off day, but I've been using it to choke bitch out. I mean, that's <laughs> not a bad way to spend your Saturday. Hey, it's pretty fun. I actually met a lot of uh nice girls at the tournament, they were all very thrilled to, you know, get choked out wrestle. by a UFC fire. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you know, um, we were talking to uh, we were talking to Eric Anders the other day, and I really share his sentiment with the fact that I'm going in there into their territory, and everyone knows who you are. Like, everyone knows, like, oh, it's a UFC fighter. So when you win, it's like, okay, you're supposed to. And then when you lose, it's like, oh, I beat a UFC fighter. So there's a lot of pressure on you doing stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. I feel that. I mean, yeah. I, I kind of feel that when people come in and train. For like sure. They're, they're always, there's always kind of a, a target on mm-hmm, your back when, mm-hmm. you know, you've, you've made it to the UFC. <laughs> like, oh, she's like been there. a superstar. She's they're doing like, the thing, the yeah, dream. She's living I wanna, the dream. I want to test my, my metal. Is, mm-hmm. is that what people say? Uh, yeah. Metal, like M E T T L E. Is that how you spell it? <laughs> like M E T A L. Oh yeah, that's probably know. it. Uh, well, there there is a saying that uh, where you know you just like you test yourself to see where you're at in comparison to where you want to be, right? And right. what better marker for that is to you know test yourself against a UFC fighter? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's always like bragging rights. No, exactly. So good job, asshole in the gi that beat me by referee's decision. Oh, but she was actually really nice. And she's a dancer. She's a pro dancer. So it felt a little like on better. A pole or like ballet? Um, ballet, but I wouldn't be surprised. She jumped on me like a pole. Oh. She legit did. Ooh, bah! <laughs> she was a guard jumper. She, she could. She jumped on the pole and was able to hold with just her legs. How was that leg strength? What was that? It was like? good. Yeah. I was I was pushing her down and then she just like hopped back up like she was climbing oh, she definitely climbing a ladder. Time on the pole. Mm, I know where your dancing credentials came from. Uh-huh. I see you, sis. <laughs> we need to go back to classes. We do. It's been a minute. It has. It's been too long. I and haven't the dexterity. Been able to be, yeah. Especially if I do another grappling tournament. I feel like that's definitely gonna give me an edge. Definitely help you with your like your guard, your leg locks, like all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely going to jump on that. But I did get gold in Nogi, so I was happy about that. Um, purple belt, but. <laughs> hey, if working, metal's a metal. Working my way up there. And I think I'm going to do ADCC trials this year. So They added a weight class, right? Yeah, they have the little chicks. So I feel a lot more comfortable going up against like that one. And it's day before weigh-in. So it's going to be kind of similar yeah. to the weight that I'll be fighting at. So I'm excited. Fuck yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Get it. How was your week? Um, oh my God. I've we've already talked about Tulum. We've talked about Florida. Um, I just got back from Vegas. So I've been traveling nonstop since the new year. Even before the new year, I've been traveling a lot. Yeah. What the fuck? So, Sit your ass down. It's you know <laughs> like I'm sad I can't train. I'm trying to like do things, you know, to keep me busy and not sad because <laughs> quite frankly I'm getting really tired of lifting me <laughs> um, I mean at least I can do something you know that's definitely yeah. a positive I can I can do some sort of physical activity but it's not the kind of physical activity that I want to do mm. um but I've been trying to like really immerse myself in the lifting thing um but I just got back from Vegas I was invited to the second celebrity poker tour tournament oh and it was super fun saw our friend al Jermaine. 
Oh. Um, and then there was a uh, big country was also there okay. representing for the MMA fighters. Yeah. Lots of football players and um, some baseball players and other like um, YouTube and Instagram, TikTok, like influencer type people. Who is the biggest like celebrity for you that you met? Like the person you were like, oh, my God. I. I yeah. Nah, nobody. They they <laughs> they didn't get. It just wasn't my A-list. demographic. Oh. It, it definitely wasn't. But I was really happy to see Al Jermaine. It's yeah. always really nice seeing him. He's you know he's a sweetheart. He is. Like, he's such a gentleman. Yeah, it was really yeah. nice seeing him. I met uh, Big Country's wife in the bathroom. She was a sweetheart. Oh, cool. I felt bad because I like just got done washing my hands and I couldn't like. <laughs> You do the, <laughs> the. I was like, I'm so happy to meet you. The fingertip hug. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was really nice. Um, I did fairly well for it only being my second time playing poker. I I got some you know tips and tricks to kind of like stick to, and I stuck to them for a little bit, and then I started drinking a little bit, and Eight. then I got a little loose. Oh, no. And I started gambling instead of, you know, playing poker and strategizing. Ah. Uh, what's <sighs> the difference? Um, just being, like, more intentional and sticking to, like, what you play and what you fold. Mm, okay. And then, so, um, once I got to, like, the second table, you know, where a lot of people were dropping out and they started, like, mixing and matching people at different tables, um, you know, just to mix things up. Mm. Um. I started playing with people who like really knew how to play <sighs> and I was falling for stuff just because I was like, no, they've got to be bluffing. Or I was trying to like go in too hard on bets with, um, with like a, a low pair, mm. um, instead of sticking to like the blackjack rules where like, if you have, um, a 10 or higher, you go ahead and like play with those. But I was like, oh, I have a pair of twos. Maybe I can get a pair, of, you know, uh, uh, three of a kind. Yes. Or, you know, something else in which one time I did. So I once was like, oh, I'm going to do that again. And it never like works the second time. Yeah. Um, so it was a really good learning experience. I had a lot of fun. I'll definitely go back again if, you know, I get the call back. Um, I was also... Like, really surprised. So there, it's, you know, Super Bowl weekend in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And there's a ton of, you know, football players that are at this event, you know, um, previous or, or current players. And I was really surprised how bad they were at taking, like, shit talking. Really? Did yes. you talk shit to them? I did. And they were sad? Why they would you were do that to about them? It. Hey, what did you I say? I was mirroring energy. Wait. Because they're, well. What did, they, what did you say? I was just talking shit. Was Was Ian Gary there? Was he one of them? No, he wasn't. <laughs> but he, I would have made him cry, to be honest. Um, uh, no, there was just, I was trying to like heckle and, you know, have fun and get uh -huh. the table talking. And they were like. Why are you so aggressive? I was like, I fight people in a cage. I, that's kind of my thing. Wait, you uh, have to give me an example of what you said because I can see <laughs> both <laughs> sides of this story. I can see it being the Jess version or I can see it being the real version. So I'd like to see, can you reenact what you actually, one of the things you said? I can't even remember. I just remember seeing the shocked faces. Like, why are you coming at me this way? I was like, you just came at me. So I was giving it back. You just I remember thought, the drinks. Yes. <laughs> yes. You were filling yourself. Yes. <laughs> you were like, ha. <laughs> and everyone cried. <laughs> yes. No, I made friends at the table, but there was one person in particular that was just like. Who was it? It was a baseball player. Apparently, they are not as tough as football players. Well, yeah, they don't get hit on purpose. True. True. If they get hit, they get to walk so <laughs> to the walking, next base. So, so I have like the mindset. I was like, listen, locker rooms are extremely hostile places, and there's no way anything I say to these people mm. is going to shake them because they've heard it all. Mm. Not the case. Girls aren't allowed in the rock locker room. For good reason. Yeah. <laughs> you cut too deep. You cut too deep, man. That's the problem. You know, all the buttons to push. <laughs> I was like, really? I expected more. That's so funny. Well, yeah. it's, it is hard because we're around fighters, too. 
And fighters are some of the hardest nosed people, athletes on the planet. Yeah. Uh, especially MMA fighters. So we get used to talking shit to them. Yeah. And then we take it out into the regular public and it doesn't go over as easily. <laughs> People are clutching their pearls. Even Excuse big, me. big, scary football players. <laughs> really? Why is this giant so afraid of me? <laughs> what am I, a mouse? He's an elephant. <laughs> That's funny. No, it was just really funny. So well, like, I'm well, glad you made friends and you didn't traumatize everyone. <laughs> I made some friends, some not so Couple. friends. Uh, <laughs> I'll do better next time. Yeah. It's How's the poker a, face? It was amazing. Yeah, let's see it. Winning hand or losing <laughs> hand. <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell. Uh, I fold. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, though. I'll, I'll definitely do it again. Very cool. Very cool. Do you know when the next one is? Um, they've been doing it every, well, I mean, this is their second one, but the okay. last one was, I think around August. Oh, okay. So, so it's like a seasonal thing. Kinda. Yeah. Nice. It should be, uh, two more this year and I'll definitely put your name in, in the basket because hey. they like personalities. Oh, and I'm a big loser at poker. So. <laughs> <laughs> I won't hurt anyone's feelings too much when they take all my money. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, did time. you get time to check out the fights this weekend? I was at the tournament, but I got to like kind of, you know how you're like just glancing at stuff when you're in public. That's kind of what we do nowadays. You have like a, a an important event to go to. You're like the dad with the football playing on the oh, radio. I have no shame about it. Like yeah. yeah. If fights are on, I'm I'm watching them. I mean, if it, even if it's only like half watching, I'm mm -hmm. still. Engaged. I want to I want to feel the, you know, the live stuff that happens, you know, it's, it's not as exciting when it's not happening live. So when I'm looking at my phone, just even if I'm glancing at it in between matches and then I see someone sinking in a choke, I'm like, oh, oh, it's about the Oh, he tapped. And, you know, it just happened. I don't know. For some reason, that's way more exciting. It's like being back in, you know, the warm up room before a fight. Yeah. You know, watching the fights beforehand. Sometimes that like stresses me out a little bit, but for the most part, I'm just like, you know, I can like pull from that energy and get myself excited. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it gets a little nervous. You just gotta be careful where you um, fantasize yourself being. <laughs> <laughs> True. Because a lot of times, Absolutely. a lot of times, I'll be backstage and I'm watching. A typical striker versus grappler fight. And if the striker's doing well, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But if the grappler's doing well, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what if that happens to me? And it's such an unnerving feeling. But you just have to put yourself in the winner's situation. Um, for instance, oh, yeah, I was working that choke yesterday, so I can possibly get that choke right now. And that's kind of what I was doing with, when I was watching the fights. I was like, oh. I'm going to go for that head and arm when I get this next match. But it was cool to jump back and watch everything after it unfolded. And it was a pretty good night of fights. You know what? I was kind of a jerk and I was like, oh, it's an Apex card. It's right? It's Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's not USC 298 that I've been looking forward mm -hmm. to. But it's a good card. It was. And then the, uh, the final fight, everyone... You know, the main event, everyone wrote off Jack Hermanson. I did, too. It's easy to do that. I mean, Pfeiffer, I keep wanting to call him Pfeiffer, but <laughs> Piper, Pfeiffer, he has some crazy knockouts on his highlight reel. And we know Hermanson gets, has gotten knocked out before. He's taken a lot of damage, even in fights that he's won. So it was kind of one of those things where this is that crossroads in, in the guy's career. He beats Hermanson. He's getting a quick shot to the title. If not, he knows he has some work to do before he gets that shot. And that's kind of what happened. He he lost. It was competitive. If it were three rounds. That's what I was just going to say. If it were three rounds, it would be a different story. He'd be moving on to the next guy, but now he has to take a step back. Yeah, it was... Um it was interesting, like, listening to a story talking about, you know, him just, like, really having to immerse himself in MMA because he felt like he really didn't have anything, like, going for himself, which, you know, I, I can understand. So it's really cool to see what he's done in such a short amount of time in mm. the sport. And I think that this type of fight will only elevate him or give him the opportunity to elevate himself because mm. it'll definitely 
It'll definitely give him a lot of feedback and answer some questions as to what he needs to do to move forward mm. and, and keep growing in the division. Um, the way he came out in the first two rounds was how I thought the fight was going to go. Mm -hmm. And then he started getting taxed. It, it's really hard to keep that kind of power output up for five rounds. And I don't know that he managed his, his power uh, for that five rounder. And I've also got to say, I was really impressed with uh, Hermanson and his takedowns, mm -hmm. like, and just showing his, his veteran status and experience. Yeah. I think uh, the tide really turned in that third round where Hermanson just came out jabbing out of nowhere. And it felt like one of those moments where your coach is telling you, you got to throw the jab, you got to throw the jab. And you're like, okay, jab, jab, sure, sure, jab will work. And then you finally throw it and you go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> he was right. And then you can't stop throwing it. And that's kind of what happened. He was throwing this really fast jab, calf kick combination. And it was working perfectly for him, especially the way that Piper was coming in. He was slowing down. He was easier to tag. He was easier to just kind of make miss and then hit the leg at when there's weight on it. And um, that was really the moment where you started seeing Piper like hesitate. You started seeing him second guess himself, started seeing him getting hurt. There was one moment where Manson jabbed him and he flinched real hard. Like there was like a, you know, that, that face people make when something gets broken or feels like it got broken. Like it's, it's not an eye poke. It's just like, Oh, what the hell? Um, he made that face a few times. So I think Hermanson surprised a lot of people with his boxing and then everything else that he does well just flowed together perfectly because he started throwing that jab mm -hmm. and putting that calf kick in there. And I think Piper even um, afterwards was crediting the calf kick to the reason why he just couldn't get things going after, yeah. the, after the second round. It's, as, as somebody Sorry, I stopped been. talking as you drank. I was like, I was like, oh no, <laughs> 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 I need a breath. <laughs> we both needed a breath. Hey, cheers to that. <laughs> Good hey. job, Jack. <laughs> yeah. I do love an upset though, especially when it's one of those old eat or young eats the old type of fights. I love it when the old eats the young. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Junior. It's kind of gruesome. Let and me teach you something. Like something you'd see on National Geographic. The male lion comes from another pride, and he kills all the cubs from the from the other male lion or something. But it feels like that. You know, you you humble the next generation. You let them know there's a lot more they need to learn because MMA is so much. There's so many skills that you have to. Uh, get a grasp of and it's it amazes me every time I learn something new because we've been doing it for so long like we're coming close to how many years two decades we're coming well you're coming close to two decades I was just talking about tough I when it's like uh, 10 years ago it's we're coming close to 10 years next next year or or will it be this summer I think it's going to be this summer. It's going to be 10 years at, since tough since we first got in the UFC and we're still learning new shit every day. Yep. So it's, it, it always amazes me. And then when you're able to still be athletic and still be fast, you can really put that experience to use against the younger generation. So that's what Hermanson did. And, uh, it was awesome to see. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely a fan of it as well. Yeah. But I think we like the five rounders, the older, <laughs> generation like, we'll let him wear himself out for two they're rounds gonna do it they, yeah they don't manage output and energy come at me well. bro oh you almost got me you almost got me gotta be quicker <laughs> than that <laughs> then when they're tired bam get them put them in their place <laughs> <laughs> put them on my lap and whip them um yeah there was a, there were a lot of good fights though like that one was really cool um i gotta look at my uh, Ige and philly was yes. the co oh my god and i gotta talk about that not just the fight but kind of like the backstory about it too yes so stop. we had so we we interviewed um oh my god larone larone and he was supposed to take on dan Ige. yes 
and Andre Feely stepped in on kind of short notice, but he had fought about eight weeks ago yeah. coming off a of victory, and he stepped up. And so the the backstory with it, which I didn't realize, but he took the fight with Ige because, well, they had trained together. Yeah. They had been training together, and they were talking about this on the broadcast, and it just – you know, put a lot of things, you know, in mm-hmm. my mind mm-hmm. because what, what Ige was saying was like, listen, like I'm nice to my training partners. I, I know the power that I have and I get beat up in training. He's mm. like, I don't, I don't train with ego. I'm trying to be a good partner. I'm trying to learn. And he was, you know, he took it personal that Andre Feely stepped in and not only like answered the call, but like made the call. Mm. It was like, Hey, I want this fight. You know, he was looking to get back in the rankings and he was looking to. Oh, I didn't know he made the call and that's, asked for That's it. what was said. Okay. That's what they were talking about um, uh, during the interviews okay. that, that Ige had during that came up. Right. During fight week. And um, he was saying, you know, yeah, he probably made that call because he was beating me up in training. Because Danny Gay is trying to learn and grow and take care of his training partners, which is really important. Mm-hmm. So it it made me feel a little bit, and I understood why he would be emotional, emotional, mm-hmm. and take it personal because he's a pretty like even keeled guy, yeah, very respectful in there, and it just made me feel kind of a you know a certain type of way about somebody stepping in like that. Yeah, it's like um, the training room can be hostile, but it should be kind of a safe space like mm-hmm. for for a fighter for myself to to learn and grow make mistakes and not be punished for them you know what I mean yeah um so when you have somebody that like trains with you and then takes that information and then goes around and tries to take a fight with you like that's I feel like that's crossing a line. I, I understand you guys aren't teammates. I understand, you know, you're not at the same gym, you know, you're casual training partners, but still I just feel very strongly about that, that that's something that you just really shouldn't do. Yeah, I, I agree. And we have our little sparring group and a lot of times I'll be telling people people the same thing especially in the lower ranks when it doesn't really mean as much like on the regional scenes and stuff um I'll tell our teammates hey she's a better teammate than an opponent yes and if you guys fight right now there might be all sorts of drama coming out um afterwards and it's not going to be worth it it's it's different when you're not at the same gym so I get where both of them are coming from like touchy Philly, he's at Team Alpha Male. And if they were training together a lot, I feel like that would be kind of a no-brainer. We're, we're not going to fight each other. And I think you also have to talk about that, too. And you've welcomed somebody into your gym, and you guys are training a lot, you have to be like, hey, these are my boundaries. Like, I'm not, I don't want you calling me out. We're not fighting together if we're going to be putting this much work in together as teammates and if you don't have that conversation then it's kind of up in the air yeah you can't really rely on somebody to act as you would Mm -hmm. or or hope that they act there definitely has to be a conversation but I also think that if you're doing cross training I feel like there is a bit of an unwritten rule Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. like hey you're coming to me like we're helping each other you're coming into my gym I can go into your gym it's kind of uh a mutual respect mm-hmm. and an unwritten rule that that sort of thing should happen. And then I saw, you know, Feely on the stool after the fight and he apologized or just like acknowledged like, Hey, you know, I was trying to do this, this and that, like, I'm sorry kind of thing. Yeah. Which, which was, you know, uh, and I want to know what he said because it sounded like, it sounded like he said something Along the lines of, oh, I didn't want to take the fight, but blah, 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 blah. And then and then Ige says, I know. So yeah. I'm wondering what he said. I'm not exactly clear on what he said. Because if he said what you said during the interviews, then that's a totally different story from what yeah. I thought he said on the stool. It sounded a little a little bit like like, hey, I, you know, had to take this opportunity. Like he was on the chopping block. And a lot of times that happens too where you're on the chopping block 
if you do a favor for the UFC, then you can save yourself another another contract. Sure. Or, or another, you can end your contract at least if they're looking to cut people. And I know they've been pretty willy-nilly with the cutting lately. So I can, I can see that too. Your back's against the wall. You have to fight your friend. A lot of people are going to choose to fight their friend. Hmm. It's mm. true. Yeah. Uh, it, it's the truth. Like, a lot of people are going to choose that. Even though it's an individual sport, you have a team that gets you there. Yeah. And and that's, you know, my point of view. It is, it's more valuable, as you were saying before, it's more valuable to have good training partners than to use them as a stepping stool to get where you want mm-hmm. because uh, you know eventually you're going to you're going to get where you want to go you're going to you know reach those goals and you don't necessarily have to go that route mm-hmm. i just think there's a better way and i think philly learned that because Ooh. he ate that second punch and he didn't need to there was a lot of emotion in that second punch and Ige's not that kind of guy. No. But he, like, he put a stamp on it. He was going to let Bryce Mitchell pray with him <laughs> at the end He's of their fight. He was that nice. He was going to do it. Michael Bisming t- put a stop to it, but he was going to do it. He's yeah. not that type of guy. He's very humble. He's very, um, he's very religious. You know, he's, he's very um, soft-spoken. He likes to talk with his power with his hands in the cage not outside of it so it was cool to see him get that redeeming moment kind of like after you felt you got stabbed in the back hey you got to stab him in the face you know (laughs) that that's the greatest it It had to it had to feel good he's a he's a uh christian (laughs) but that had to feel good (laughs) <laughs> Jesus forgave him I mean God is the most vengeful character in the great book so he smited it's him all about it <laughs> he smited him <laughs> right there <laughs> with that oh. second punch um but yeah I agree I don't like the idea of people working together and then fighting each other and then it's you know, hard enough out there you know someone's gonna catch feelings and it's always a tough one out but yeah. um yeah, I don't I don't blame Philly for going for it because a lot of times your back is against the wall and there's not as many options out there uh, uh, outside of the UFC as there used to be. No, and for a while it seemed that there there were, but like I'm hearing shady stuff about 1FC and mm-hmm. then you know Bellator being dissolved yeah. into PFL, it's like and Combate, I heard stuff about them too. Like Ooh, I've might always not. heard stuff about. I them. mean, everyone's heard stuff about Combate. <laughs> so the 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 what do you call it? The pool of just promotions is getting smaller and more condensed, and you don't really want to go out there into the wild if you don't have to. You know, I was thinking about it. I'm like, I've been, you know, recently. I've been to some like you know, local shows, smaller shows, uh, or, you know, smaller circuit shows. And I'm just like, man, I feel really thankful. Mm -hmm. Like super thankful. (laughs) I mean, like, man, you don't really don't have to worry about like a lot of like logistics. You don't have to worry about anything. And like being out in, in the wild, as you put it, in the fray wild. (laughs) Yeah. It's crazy out there. Shit is crazy. I mean, You know, there's just, like, nobody's checking and balancing things. Stuff gets, like, lost all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's kind of crazy. So I'm very thankful that I've had the opportunity to fight for this, you know, pristine, well-oiled machine. Even though, you know, there are pros and cons to everything. I'm just, I'm very thankful to to be here. Yeah, as soon as you go outside of the UFC, you realize (laughs) what you're... You realize what you're missing out on. And, like, for me, I got cut and went to Invicta. And Invicta was also a well-oiled machine at the time. But there were a lot of things that I kind of took for granted because my second fight was in MMA was in the UFC. So I was like, oh, man, everything is like my first fight. (laughs) 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 Everything is like that country uh, fight promotion that I fought on in the middle of nowhere in North Carolina. Like, that's what most of outside of the UFC is like. And you have better and worse versions of that, but you're never going to get 
the PI. You're never going to get a, a full set of clothes, which people were annoyed with at the time, but now it's kind of convenient. Um, you're never going to get nutritionists and, and doctors checking in on you during your weight cut. And there's just a lot of things that uh, the UFC does that makes it more professional and more of an actual organization than a lot of the other ones out there. So you can see why someone, if their back was against the wall, like uh, uh, every now and then I'll talk to a fighter and I'm like, man, you took that fight. Like, that's crazy. Why would you take that? <laughs> like, not, to be, not to be rude, but that was crazy that you took that fight. Kudos to you. You have some balls on you and they say, hey, I had to. You got to be a company, like a company player sometimes. Yeah. And it, it is what yes it is. Man. It is what it is. Poor Philly, like he ate a he ate a few punches for the company, but I bet they'll call him again. You know, he's, for sure. He's, 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 I don't think he was going anywhere. Honestly, he was coming like he was really turning himself around. He had like really reinvented himself. Yeah. So he was, you know, coming from he he just won, right? Um, let me check. I'm pretty sure he was on like two win, two fight win streak. So I don't necessarily think that he was on the chopping block. I think he was just trying to break into the rankings. Exactly. And the thing is, if you're if your contract is almost up, mm. then there's always a chance that you could not be getting called back. You know, like there's always that chance, especially um, in a stacked division like the featherweight division. So. He, he won his last one. He lost. He won. He's been, yeah, he's been kind of like yeah. odd and even on everything. And, like, honestly, that's the type of record that gets cut. Um, it's the fact that I've done a lot of favors with the UFC. I feel like that has a lot to do with me sticking around and, and not getting cut when the contract comes up to question. And I think a lot of people end up doing favors like that just to – stay in the good graces of the UFC roster gods. It, yeah, absolutely. So, um, unfortunate that it had to end with drama, but I feel like they squashed it after that, and they're good. You can always count on dudes to, like, punch it out. Yeah. And then go get a beer afterwards. Yeah, like, it seemed like they squashed it. Um, but I really, I really do love the way Ige fights. He fights like a little tank. It's um it, the juxtaposition of his style versus Philly. You can see how he kind of tries to, touchy Philly kind of tries to move out of the way of danger and be more loose and fluid. And then Ige just comes in like, like this battle tank, like a battle toad. And then when the punches come out, they're so sharp, they're so fast. It's, it's really scary and really cool to watch. It's that, that body type matchup. Mm -hmm. Like me being like kind of a, a long, lanky, gangly fighter. Mm -hmm. It, you know, I don't have that power that mm -hmm. like a shorter, stockier, like tank mm -hmm. <laughs> body type, you know, does. So it's um sometimes that can be a really tough matchup uh, if you have that kind of um, striking style versus striking style, that body type versus that body type. I feel like there's a lot of times where the shorter stalker stockier lower center of gravity fighter um has has that edge mm -hmm. there, there's a very specific way to fight somebody like that yeah yeah he he did a good job um and i felt like that camp too if you come in short notice against like uh someone from that camp then you're going to have your work cut out for you because they have so many fighters, so many high level fighters coming through building game plans with uh, Eric Nixick that you're always going to be kind of at a disadvantage because they have so much experience just creating game plans for different body types, for different styles, for different techniques and stuff like that. So he's uh, Eric it's a Nixick, tough one. <laughs> he's, he's definitely like making a name for himself, putting a stamp on that camp mm -hmm. just because of the, like the readiness of the fighters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's always got to ace up his sleeve when it comes to uh quick, like quick uh, adjustments during the fight. Yeah. So another fight I was super excited about me. was Rodolfo. Oh my goodness. Rob oh, not Rodolfo. Robocop. 
Robocop is so cool. That motherfucker cuts so much weight. See, you think I, look so? at, I look at him <laughs> and I'm just like, it's not fair. So hey, I, I mix I them do. up because they have the same arms. Have you <laughs> Rodolfo and Robocop have the same exact arms? They're only different colors, but they have so many veins. It, both of their arms look like that, like bro handshake that Arnie did in Predator with the uh, with, <laughs> with homeboy. <laughs> like that's what their biceps look like. And so are you talking about Robocop or Rodolfo? I, I'm saying they have the same arm. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about both of them. Okay. You're not listening to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to catch up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, Robocop is the one I'm more of a fan of. Rodolfo grew on me. He uh, he kind of had a rough start in the UFC. He too much weight, gassing out in fights. And then getting tapped by, what, like a, a blue belt or a purple belt? Something belt. It was He, he shouldn't have gotten tapped by that guy, basically. Dude. On paper, but this guy was an MMA fighter and he was coming in as more of a jujitsu guy. And uh, he lost a fight to Chris Curtis, I think, after that, but then he's won a few. And this one was a real nice finish. Like that head and arm try or head and arm choke was just super slick. The way he like hopped over the mount, got in there, laid flat, didn't have to pass. He just stayed in that mount position and got the choke. Like, money and then i was laughing because at the end they're doing a post fight speech and he's going oh i squeezed i squeezed until i couldn't see anymore <laughs> so, I'm like what the <laughs> fuck and then i look at his arm and you can see every vein in this guy's arm his biceps are as big as his head he looks insane like is not fair. A lot of acai in his <laughs> so much acai competition days. Him and Robocop. Oh my god. Dude, Their Bogus acai them. is off the charts. <laughs> Somebody call you Sada. They I mean, they're gone. <laughs> oh yeah. I actually I actually got a visit while I was at my jiu-jitsu tournament. Stop it. The one day they come, the one day I'm not in, in like say, a, an hour away from my house, they came yesterday. I know, and I'm talking to her through the ring, and I'm like, oh, wait, she's being kind of pressed. Like, she might be someone I need to talk to, so I answered it. She's like, hello, I'm here with the U, uh, the UFC Anti-Doping Commission. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so I updated my whereabouts real quick, and I'm like, sorry, you're not here. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just my luck. Hopefully I don't have a strike against me. This is the only acai. I take <laughs> <laughs> my liquid carriage to help me. And I don't do that, you know, in competition time. So could you imagine it might be easier? I feel like if I a little tipsy. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it depends on how long the fight goes. Because you could easily get drunk and knock someone the fuck out. It would definitely <laughs> give me some like courage yeah like, that's what i'm saying liquid it's courage thing. it's a thing it's a thing i For think sure. i think if it was one minute rounds <laughs> one minute rounds two minute break i get to rehydrate and then have a beer and then go back out there for another round i could totally fight someone <laughs> drunk I mean, I feel like I try to fight people. <laughs> I, I always postulate, though. I never actually do anything, but I always feel like scrappy do. A little bit, <laughs> little bit feistier than normal. Just a tiny bit. I'm just like a little angsty Ange. I get you. <laughs> it makes me happy. It's not even that. It takes my angst away. <laughs> it's not even that threatening. I'm just like. <laughs> Come here, let me at her. <laughs> and then she gets really sleepy. Right? And then I fall asleep. <laughs> yes, I found. Uh, well, I didn't find, but on my time hop today, or was it yesterday? No, it was today. Um. Oh yeah. I I got time hopped a video of sleepy drunk Ange. You love that video. You sent it to me like it's, twenty times because it's hilarious. Because we're literally because it comes up every year. Uh, okay. It comes up every year. So do other ones, but I think that one was the funniest. Why, though? It's just like me sleeping. But we were at a gym fight party. 
at a fight viewing party. It's hilarious. I've fallen asleep. Well, I wasn't drunk, but <laughs> I've fallen asleep at a metal concert before. Like we were at a Slayer <laughs> concert, and they're playing like I forget who was opening up for them, but some band was opening up for them, and it's like, <laughs> and I'm sitting there. Like a I found a line. seat. <laughs> yes, it was totally. <laughs> that was that noise, you know that that uh, mimics the uterus noise. Yes. What yes. what is that called? It was just white noise for me. Yeah. The yeah, AM, ASMR, yeah. AMS, whatever that is. Something like that, yeah. It, it put me right to sleep. I was sick, though. That was my excuse. I wasn't drunk. I was sick. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, but I we digress. Sick. We digress. <laughs> um, Robocop's fight was insane. Um, he's just, like, so strong. And I, I hate that he had to fight Brad Tavares because I feel like he gets the, the scariest of the scary. He really does. You know? And I mean, he, I mean, I, I chop it up to like he, you know, company man, but he also yeah. believes in himself. And yeah. I mean, he's, he's a tough fighter. He's very skilled. He's a hard hitter. He can put you out with one punch, but he does seem to get some really tough fights. He's gotten the toughest recently. And, um, you know, he, he still gives them trouble, you know, but this fight especially, um, was kind of a showcase fight for Robocop. He, he was just able to pressure really good, like right off the bat, push him up against the fence, make him, uh, run for a second, you know, not like run like Conor McGregor, but just kind of skirt the side of the fence and really try to get away from his pressure. And then those, those turbo combos that he landed looked straight out of a video game. It's again, it, it's really hard for me on, on these kinds of MMA fighters that cut a ton of weight. This mm. is what, you know, this is why we have anti-doping because, or, you know, this is why we monitor the weight cutting and the, the pre and post weight so that it evens the playing field. And I just, I literally look at these guys that cut so much weight and I'm like, you have a really unfair advantage. Like, it's not fucking fair. Mm. I, I just have a hard time with it. And it partially because I've come up a weight class and seen people cut down like 125ers, uh, you know, 135ers that are now 115ers. It's just like, I just have a hard time with it. You do lose something, though, when you cut weight. Like, sure. You just have to avoid the barrage that happens before that. And that's where you get to the elite level, like the top 10 or the top 5, and that's when you actually see what you have. Is that weight cut going to benefit you, or are you going to have to start sizing down so you have that endurance and you're able to handle a five-round fight? Because we saw for uh, Pfeiffer, it didn't work out. You know, we see that for a lot of guys who are used to getting those first round finishes that once it goes to decision, it doesn't work out, you know, especially yeah. once you get a higher ranked op opponent. But sometimes it really does. And you shut your opponent out because you have such a power and strength advantage and you get off on it first. But who is at the very top that's doing that? That's like having a crazy weight cut right now. Right now, I think a lot of people are. Oh, I mean, I can't name it off the bat because I don't have it written down, but yeah. there are fighters. I mean, you look at Andrade, you look at her having a really big run for a long time. Now, maybe the weight cut's getting up with her. Now, maybe the, the fight lengths, the amount of damage that she sustained is finally catching up with her. Mm. But it did, it served her well for a long time. Yeah. And then you have, you know, other girls in the weight class where it's benefited them. You have male fighters like the Robocops that, you know, maybe he's not, you know, top five, but he's still doing really well. And he does have a huge size advantage and strength advantage and power advantage. I think the only person who has really used that to his benefit is Perea. And that's because he didn't have to fight that much mm -hmm. at the weight class where he had a huge size advantage. Mm -hmm. If he had to continue to fight at that weight class, I think a lot of people would have figured him out. Sure. But that's what happened with Andrade. A lot of people figured her out. Like, she went on a four-fight lose streak recently. And I, I, I just feel like, you know, whatever you, whatever advantage you get from cutting a ton of weight, eventually it comes back to bite you in the ass. Eventually. It's, it's like steroids. Eventually, yeah. you might have a heart attack. Eventually, like, something horrible might happen health-wise that 
will affect you eventually. Yeah. So, you know, there's there are uh, checks and or not checks and balances, but uh, pluses and minuses to every type of advantage you try to do. It's like, do you want to do it the healthy way or do you want to do it the way that gets you the fastest benefits first? It is a trade off. And I think that just from what I've seen that it gets people far and then but eventually, I don't know how the time frame that it'll start picking up and start like taking its toll, but it is an advantage mm. that I've seen that I've experienced. And I think that the whole purpose for anti-doping was and like the weight cut checks is to prevent that. But people are still finding a way around it because still having that size and strength advantage is the best advantage you can have yeah. for a time. But it's wild. The weight cut thing only really happens with California now, mm. right? And it's kind of crazy that California, uh, they're they're big on the weight cut thing, like making sure you don't rehydrate too big when you fight. But now they're trying to add that grounded opponent rule too. So they're just like kind of, let's just mix things up. Let's make our own league, <laughs> you know? I feel like they're, yeah, it's great that you're, you know, focused on this one rule that, you know, may or may not need to be changed, but there's a lot of other shit that you need to be focused on as far as rules and judging and the commission. And I feel like it's just a little like carrot dangled up to be like, Oh look, we're really focused on this when it's like, you, we have other, like we have bigger issues to be honest. Like what? Like, I just blinked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're trying to fix fighter pay, but well, the, the move that they made isn't really going to affect anyone. Well, like the judging. Yeah. Like the, the judging across the board, the, mm. the commissions being involved um, and, and not being held accountable. I think that's a way more pressing issue than like one hand down and posting weight on. Yeah. You know I'm, what I'm, I'm saying? I'm totally down for that. But I feel like I would need less judges if I could take advantage of that rule. If you took away that rule, like which fight was it? Um, which it was the the Robocop fight yeah. where they were he was playing the game and that fight would have been over immediately if that rule wasn't in play. Um, same with the Aljo fight. We would have had Piotr Jan as a champion because he was kind of like relying on the fact that Piotr Jan couldn't hit him because he was on one knee. And then he went, boom, you know, <laughs> he went for it. He was like, Hey, you're open. I'm going to knee it. So it's, it really would change the, just the flow of a lot of fights. If you allowed sure. that rule. And I feel like it is a weird one where you're literally trusting your opponent not to foul you in order to stay safe. I think that it's definitely a rule that needs to be changed, but I think that there are other issues that need to go. And I feel like that's the judging. I feel like across the board, people need to unite with their judging criteria. Um, I feel like, People just need to be more uniformed across the commissions, mm. not just like, oh, this is our rules for this commission. This is our rule in Vegas. This is our rule in Florida, mm. um, because there are a lot of people that are, uh, again, they're getting licensed as well in certain states because the commissions are way more lenient. And so they go to these states. They only fight in those states. Mm -hmm. um, there are less stringent rules with uh, doping testing in certain states, so people tend to have fights there, mm. only fight there. There's just a lot of things across the board that I think need to be more uniform. I, I think that that's a really, you know, good place to start, I guess, or, a, you know, something that needs to be changed. But I just think that there are more pressing issues. It seems like it's the easiest one to attack right now because those uh, commissions are all with people who are grandfathered in, they all have connections with certain people. And it's like, it took so much to get Douglas Crosby out of there. So much, so many violations, so many people complaining about them. Uh, Al Joe's whole camp complained about him and he was still judging for years, you know? So it, it really does seem like the commissions are like these dons, these godfathers, and it's hard for the states to attack the commissions, but they're like, okay, 
maybe we could change this rule. Maybe that'll give us some some leeway into making further actions. But I agree. I would love for them to change judging because it doesn't make any sense. No, you even had, um, what was it? There was uh, Tia Fimo Lopez fought a boxing match. And I've heard his opponent's name is escaping me. But again, people were commenting on the crazy judging, mm. like craziness in boxing. And I think one of, um, I mean, he won the fight. It and that's where they're grandfathered in from boxing. And, and somebody made the comment, one of, uh, one of the guys made a comment like, um, like the sport was less crooked when the mob was running. <laughs> it, it was a quote like that. Yeah. Basically. And uh, because one of like uh, two judges had it one way and then one judge had it like 117 to 111, which was an insane mm. and completely out of left field as far as the other judges had scored it. Mm. They were they were in alignment and this one was just kind of out of left field. So it's um, yeah, it just everything across the board needs revamping. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I say throw them all. all out. <laughs> yes. Out with the Burn old and with the them. new. Burn them. The young <laughs> eats the old. Get, let's get a bunch of TikTokers to judge fights. Oh, my God. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I think it's time for our uh, exclusive part. We have so much to talk about. I think I want to talk about a couple of fights on the prelims that really tickled my fancy. Um and then you had some questions you wanted to answer, I right? I did. We had some people uh, give me some questions that they want answered on Instagram post. So we'll be discussing those ones. We'll see you on the other side. You better subscribe if you want to see us on the other side. Bye.